Hey guys, um, you guys know that NAM is coming up and we plan on releasing a new plugin. I wanted to give you a walkthrough of this thing uh, a couple days before so that you can see what's going on here. And I really wanted to show it off because I am very, very, very excited about this thing. It is called the Transgressor. Now what this thing does is it gives you separate EQ control over your transient and your sustain sound. Uh, what it does is it lets you really get in there and tweak exactly the way you want your drums to sound. So let me just dive in and show you an example. I'm gonna take this drum clip here uh, and walk you through how I use this plugin. Let's have at it. So here's the drums we are working with. Now those drums don't sound bad but I don't want a boomy kit. I want something tight that hits hard that can cut through a dense rock mix, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the kick. So let's make sure these settings are reset so that nothing's going on. Okay, so let's solo this kick. The first thing I noticed is that this kick is super boomy. And while that can be great, um, in this instance, I just don't want that much bloom in my kick. So what I'm going to do first is take out that bloom. Now, the first thing to do when you open this plugin is to set up the detector. That is what detects whether something is a transient or a sustain. Um, and the easiest way I find to do it is to mute the sustain altogether. Okay, so we're only listening to the transient. And then you can set up your detector settings so that... Uh, you're really focusing on the transient and not getting any false triggers or anything, so. Okay, you notice there's a couple little weird things going on. Uh, we have this little switch here that sets the cutoff to hard. And I'm gonna up this side chain a little bit. Let me listen to this, what the detectors listen to. Okay. I don't want that, that bloomy low end uh, interfering with the trigger. So let's hear that now. Okay, so there. That's all the false triggers are gone. Um, so now we have complete control of our transients. And now we can set this release time of the transient to be whatever we want. So it, it's set super short by default. You can go all the way down to almost nothing. Anyway, so what I want to do first is focus on this bloom. This, So I'm going to take out some low end from this sustain. And this is what we start out with. Now I'm not adding any transient here. I'm just taking out some stuff from the sustain. And I'm only taking out this low end so it's not so blah blah every time you hit it. And already that gets us a lot closer. It's a kick drum that's hitting hard. But I want to now do some extreme stuff to the transient. Now that rule that people talk about where you should only boost or cut by a few dB those rules don't apply here because we're not EQing the entire kick drum, we're just EQing the transient. So we can go kind of crazy with this stuff. So first thing I'm going to do is scoop out the mids because the low, 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 low mids. Because I don't like them. And I'm going to add a lot of low end and quite a bit of high end. Uh, let's bring that. Uh, there we go. Now, you'll notice that this low shelf, it has this, it lets you go kind of extreme in the resonance in the cue. Um, and what it does is it gives a little bit of a boost right here. And that actually, 
in this case, in a normal EQ, that's kind of a stupid feature to have, but in this, it actually really lets that kick that low end through nice and hard. All right, so I'm gonna call that a day. I don't know, maybe that's good. Anyway, this is what we started out with, with the kick. And this is what we're ending up with. Okay, so obviously there's, that's a huge change in the kick. It's hitting hard. It's not booming throughout, you know, for four seconds each time you hit it. Anyway, that may or may not be right for the sound, but that's a good starting point. Let's move on. So let's put that back in with a whole drum kit. Now, okay, so we're getting closer. That, the overheads, let's listen to those really quick. There's this kind of knocky sound from the kick drum. And I want to get rid of that because it sort of takes away from my low, hard hitting kick. Right? So, the easiest way to do that is again with uh, this guy. So, I put this on the overhead track, but I'm not going to use it like we did last time. What I'm going to do is actually sidechain the kick to the overhead. Um, and I've actually already routed it. So I have a kick coming out going to my overhead channel here. So that if I listen to the external sidechain on this guy, let's just solo the overheads. It's a kick drum. But if I listen to the sound, it's the overheads. That's because I'm using the kick drum to key this transient shaper here. Because what I want to do is take out that knock every time that kick hits. So let's set up this detector. And mute this because it's easy to... Okay. Make sure there's no false hits in there. Sounds good. All right, so now we can go in and focus on that knock. Ah, you can really hear it there. And just take it out. Okay, so now let's listen to these together. All right, we're getting closer, okay? So we have their kick pretty much dialed in. Let's get rid of this guy. Now let's focus on the snare a bit. And this is where things get pretty fun. Solo the snare, bring in the... The snare? Yeah, snare, all right. Again, we're reset to default settings, so it's not making any change to the sound. First thing I'm gonna do is go in and listen to the side chain. And this will tell you, you know, if, just give you what's going, what I'm doing here is, any sound below this threshold here will not be considered a transient. Anything that rises above it will. Now this here changes from a hard cutoff to a soft. If I have this on hard, then anything below this will just be wiped out completely. If I have it on soft, it will still detect these transients, just less extremely. So let me just show you real quick. Transient only. So you can hear those kick drums still are triggering this transient detector. But if I turn this on and say, get rid of all that junk underneath the thing, it's only picking up that snare that's going up above that threshold. On close mics, I usually like to have this hard if I'm doing a more general sort of soft massaging. It's nice to have this on soft. Anyway, that's set up. Let's move in.
So first things first, what do we want to fix here? I don't like how long that snare sustains after its initial transient. There's sort of this like junk, junk, junk sound every time it hits. So let me try to find out where that's happening. Okay, sounds about right there. So I'm going to take that down. Now I'm going to focus on that transient. And I can, you know, I probably want this to be a bit longer. I'm going to boost the low and high again because I want it to hit hard and have more impact. There we go. Okay, I kind of like that. So this is where we ended up with we started. Again, we're not, uh, this one I'm not going to go too crazy with. I just wanted to take out that junk, junk sound every time it hit. Okay, so let's call that done for now. Now this is where it gets fun. Actually, no. First, let's listen to what we have. All right, we're getting closer. Now, the last step, which this is one of my favorite things, is the room sound. Okay, so if you solo these rooms, they sound uh, kind of insane. There's so much wash going on. Okay, so I, I can't work with that and make much use of it. It's just too much too much stuff washing out. You turn it up and it just sounds like a mess. Um, but what we can do is, like we did with the overheads, I'm going to sidechain the room sound to the snare. And again, sorry, I already routed that to the room. So if I listen to the detector in the room sound and put on sidechain, I've got the snare. So I'm going to do the same idea, solo the transient, make sure I'm going off. Okay, so we got the snare going, triggering this room. Now I'm going to do a little bit different this time. I'm going to turn down the sustain and I'm going to boost the release time very high. So every time the snare hits, we hear the room sound come in and then it turns down. And what that does is it lets me boost the room sound without, now you know, I'm going to crank it high. So now I can hear the room of the snare. without it sounding so bloody dry. So if we mute this room, the whole kit just sounds too dry. Now I'm not quite done yet. I'm gonna EQ this. Again, there's a bit too much mid-range and I tend to like to take out that low mid stuff. Sorry, my phone's beeping. Ah, there we go. I'm just gonna crank this. There we go. Okay, so now look. Look, 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 look. This is what our room sounds like soloed. And I can turn that time up. Okay, so here's what we got here now. We started out with this. A boomy knocky kick, a sort of weenie snare and a washed out room and we ended up with I can adjust levels I probably went a little crazy with that anyway you can see that you can really take your sound and just dial it in however you want uh, there's no limit to what you can do with your drums if you're having issues getting your drums to cut through this this plugin makes it so easy 
to fix that. Anyway, I will see you at NAM. I'll be giving some presentations, probably focusing on this because it's my newest and I'm most excited about it. Anyway, have fun music making. Goodbye. <laughs>